are possible amen to them that believe that's a phrase that Jesus said in fact it's a saying in um, mark mark chapter 9 somewhere around there Jesus said all things are possible to them who will believe believe what believe the finished work of Jesus and believe that God can do great things in our lives mm. I can do all things through Christ is a Bible promise from Philippians 413 and I was just reading this scripture this morning in the amplified version and I just want to see show you all what it says Philippians 413 I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength to me I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Mm. This scripture is full of the power of God. You know, the King James Version says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it, without Christ, we can't really do anything, mm. can we? No, definitely not. But it's Christ who gives us that inner strength to do anything, be it work, be it studying at school, you know, maybe something that new, something you're trying out for the first time. Christ enables you mm -hmm. and he empowers you with the ability to do something that you couldn't do that's with your right. own strength. And that's what we're going to talk about, really. God's power at mm. work in you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, really, that scripture, I can do all things through Christ, is really powerful because, you know, it's not just saying I can do all things through me. Mm. Or just maybe saying the first part, I can do all things. That's right. It is through Christ. And we're going to see that through Christ, we have the power. Mm. And I was just um, thinking about yeah. this in the morning. You know, every promise in the Bible, it's always something to do with in Christ, through mm. Christ, by the blood of Jesus, in Him, mm. through Him, or by Him, and of Him. Yeah. So that means we don't do anything of ourselves, mm. but we do it with the ability that God gives us. That's the difference you find when you get saved. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus and you're no longer dependent on you. Yeah. Rather now, than it's, him. Yeah. It's not like, you know, this spirit is just going to come over you and, you know, you're going to just do stuff that you didn't physically mm. do. But the Holy Spirit gives us the power. Like, like I said, trying something new, mm. the Lord will say, you can do it. Mm. Do it. We have to do it, obviously, with our physical uh, strength, but mm. we get help. You yeah. know, it's like the natural. When you mix it with the super, yeah. it becomes supernatural. That's right. And, you know, um, when we talk about God's power at work in us, we need to see when did we receive the power of God. And maybe we should just go to Acts. Acts 1 and verse 8. 
Now we're talking about God's power at work in us. And you know, as a Christian, you're not on your own anymore, or you're not living by yourself anymore. You have the Holy Ghost inside of you. And when we receive Jesus, after that we receive the Holy Spirit, where we say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Once we say that, He comes into us, and we don't have to ask Him again. He comes and lives in us. So um, we're talking about the power of God, and the way it starts is by receiving the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing. We receive the Holy Spirit into our life. And then we see what else we receive. Acts 1.8. It says, But you shall receive power. That's us. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And so, you know, in this um, book of Acts, Jesus was talking to the, actually to the disciples, but we see that this is also available to us because we are in Jesus. And mm -hmm. so we can put, you know, different places. It has put Jerusalem, Judea. Maybe you may not go to those places, but wherever you are, you Utmost can be parts of the earth. at the most parts of the earth. And, you know, we are in one part of the earth. And wherever you are, you can be a witness. Mm -hmm. But I want to just see that part where it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And that's very interesting. Really, when you go to read that and see, I will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes into hmm. me. What is this power? I, is it, I got a good yeah. definition of this word power, and I just, I'll just read it. Okay. God's power is supernatural ability working on your behalf. That's so powerful. I'll read it again. God's power is supernatural ability working on your behalf. Mm. God wants to work in behalf of us. Mm. I mean, we're not on this earth alone doing yeah. things by ourselves. We've got greater power backing us up. That's right. So the power of God is just supernatural, enabling us to do things that we couldn't do um, on our own. Yeah. But when we receive this power, you, mm. when you, like you said, you say, Lord, fill me with this power, fill me with the Holy Spirit, and He fills you. Mm, that's and, right. And this power is not just available to special people or to certain groups of people, or maybe if you're an evangelist or a pastor, this power is available to those who believe. Mm. Right? There's something else also about the power. It's miracle working power. That's what the definition is there in the Greek. It's a miracle working power. Mm. So you have that inside of you when you receive the Holy Spirit. And um, we should never confuse this power with some magical power or something, because it's not a magical power that, you know, flashes in the sky. Mm. You know, you can't reduce God's power to that level. So first of all, we remember that His power comes inside of us when we mm. receive the Holy Spirit. So you not only have Jesus on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost, you also have received one of His attributes, the power that Jesus had, that's the same power you've got. So this power is the same power that Jesus actually was working in. I mean, He was on this earth, He was working with an amazing power, and that same power has been given to you, and even greater. So, you know, I want to take you to our example now. We may think, what kind of power is this? Is it magical power we're talking about? No. But no, it's, it can't be that because it can't be, it's, it can't be that, so, I mean, that level, so low. So let's because see. Because then, then Jesus would have, would have not said, I give unto you power mm. to cast out demons yeah. and to tread over the power of the enemy. He wouldn't yeah. have said that then yeah. if it was a one-man show, mm. if it was only able for him to do this magical trick when he got into this uh, trance or something, mm. then he wouldn't have given us that power. Yeah. But it's something that we all have. That's right. And you don't have to feel weird about yourself when you when you manifest the power of God because it's it's just spontaneous. Mm. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, it's like it's it's not even like um, visible like to people. Like some some people may say there's something different in you mm. because they see us doing things differently yeah. than the world. Mm. You know the normal worldly way of doing things, but so the power of God is visible and it can not also be seen like magical power. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be magical power because it's not reduced to that mm. levels. I mean, magical, supernatural. Yeah, is it a is supernatural. Word. And we're going to see that example in Acts 8. 
And we're going to see from verse 9 all the way through 24. Now, this is an account of a man named Simon. And he was a sorcerer, and he was deceiving many people. And I don't think we have time to read the whole account, but, you know, maybe you can read this, you know, when you're meditating on the word, this whole account of Simon and how he really was changed. And I'll read maybe a few verses. So there was a certain man. His name was Simon. We're reading from verse 9. He was using sorcery, and he bewitched the people of Samaria, or deceived them, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this is what they said about Simon, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. And then we see verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And then we see verse 13 says that Simon himself also believed. And he was baptized and he continued with Philip. And he wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now here we see, and we're going to, when you read on from verse 14, we see that the Holy Ghost comes on the people. And Simon also says, you know, give me this Holy Ghost. And he wanted to get the Holy Ghost with money. And he thought he could buy it. Now, when you read previously and see that people thought that this was the great power of God, what Simon was doing. He was practicing sorcery and witchcraft. And there were some wonders taking place. But really, he wanted to really be some great one. That's mm -hmm. what it says. He did all that so he could be praised. He could be praised. Yeah, and people got deceived. Mm -hmm. And then Philip comes to the same area and he preaches the kingdom and the true signs and wonders of healing take place. So when you see, then the Holy Ghost comes upon the people and now Simon wants that Holy Ghost because he thinks there's maybe this is even greater. Maybe this will, you know, enrich my practice of sorcery if I get this. Hmm. And then we see that, um, uh, Sa um, was it Philip? Or was it was Peter and John. Peter and John also, they say, you can't buy the Holy Ghost with money. You have thought that the gift of God is so cheap. You know? Yeah, that's right. And then uh, we see that Simon, you know, uh, Peter actually goes on to say, he says, you have no part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. And when you read on, Peter says to him, I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Now, when I read that verse, Really, when Peter perceived, I believe he heard what the Spirit was saying. The Spirit showed him something about Simon. Simon, in his heart, he was full of bitterness and iniquity. And maybe he was doing these signs and wonders and all this magic just to kind of show, hide that pain or hide that bitterness and iniquity that he was feeling. And so he did all this so people would think he's a great one. But Peter knew it. You know, the only way you can know truly a person's heart is when you have the Spirit of God. Mm. And if he shows it to you. Mm. And we see that Simon really, he came down to that place and he said, I repent. And so you see the difference. Philip came preaching the kingdom of God and true miracles happened. It was by preaching the kingdom. Whereas Simon, he was doing some, you know, some sorcery or mm. something, you know, maybe to the demons and did wonders. And but there's something else also. When you, when you work with the demonic powers, it compels you to like pay money and then you will get something done. Yeah. And so it's not cheap, is it? It's not cheap. But the power of God, God of course gives it to us as a gift freely, mm. but it's not cheap in the sense, um, God wants his power to be, to be used by everyone. In yeah. other words, God gives his power freely, not mm. with like he wanted to buy the power mm. of God, but you can't. And he doesn't do it, you know. As a business. As a business. Yeah. And, you know, he won't do it just to show that he's a great one. Mm. He'll do it so people will have long-lasting results. Mm. You know, Simon was doing it at that moment just to get people's attention. Mm. So you, there is no match of magic kind of power to the power of God. You can't compare it. So from this account, you see that very clearly. Mm. People thought that Simon had the great power of God. But really, he was operating a demonic power, trying to hide his pain so he could do this sorcery. Hmm. But you say you can't find fulfillment in that. 
You can only find fulfillment when you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior and mm. receive the Holy Spirit and you receive the true power so you can be a witness for Jesus. And ultimately, God gets the glory mm. for all that. Right? That's right. Work, you know, God loves to use people. It's something about God. Even when He created Adam, He wanted a friend. It's mm. something about God and people. Mm. God loves people so much that He wants to work with them. Mm. But ultimately, He gets the glory. Mm. We work with Him right. and He works through us. Right. And we get things done. Mm. and God gets the glory. And His power reaches into our innermost being, the, power, the, the heart, you know, yeah. our soul. And you see, Simon's sorcery, not, none of that reached to his inner soul. It didn't bring fulfillment to him. It says here that he was in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Mm. You know, that was what was in his heart. He couldn't get rid of that with all his sorcery and all. You know, demon powers really cannot set you free. Though how much they you know, through you try to magnify themselves, they can't, mm. you know, it's only when you receive Jesus, you receive the power of God that is the true power that works long lasting results like healing, healing, or like deliverance from oppression or depression. Mm. So that is the power of God. And people here were getting set free, truly getting set free, not mm. just wonder and amazement. They were amazed at the results it was bringing in their God's life. word is power, right? When it, you speak the word out of your mouth, that itself is power. Mm. And you know, um, like the promises like, I can do all things through Christ who mm. strengthens me. God says in Jeremiah one twelve that I will back my word. When you mm. speak God's word, mm. He says, I'm going to back it up. Yeah. I'm going to stand for that word. If you mm. say, um, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God mm. says, yes, I'm going to protect you from fear. That's You're not right. going to be afraid. So God's word is power. That's right. Speaking God's word is and power. And you know, on our own, we are limited. But with God's power, we can do all things. Yes. You know, that's what Paul was saying in Philippians 4.13 when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means there is a force on the inside of you working. And there are times you're going to sense it in you that's working. You'll notice mm. a lot of things that you thought you couldn't do, you'll start doing because of Christ strengthening you. But God has to work with our thinking and our words as well. He has given us His word, but we have to bring our thoughts and our words in line to see these results. And, you know, maybe, you know, you may think of some areas right now even, you know, just think of some areas in your life that you find impossible to work out. You know, there could be something. Maybe it's in school. Maybe you're finding it hard to deal with some uh, a subject or maybe an exam, or maybe it's on the other hand, maybe you're finding it difficult to, you know, be a witness for Jesus or shine your light there. You're, you're finding it difficult. But remember, what does the Bible say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hmm. And God will only back His word. The yeah. more you say, I can't, the more you say that, the more it's going to have an effect on your life. Hmm. But when you say, I can, God's power begins to work through you. Through Christ, I can, not I can only, That's through right. Christ, that His inner power begins to work through you. You'll mm. see it manifest actually, because it works and, results. And the power of speaking God's word, like I said in Jeremiah one twelve, in the Amplified Bible it says, Then said the Lord to me, You have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. The Lord says, I'm alert and active. That means He responds mm. only when we speak His word. Mm. I'm alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Mm. So God doesn't just back up positive speaking alone. You know, we can just say, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. But when you speak, I can do all things to Christ. Mm. Now he's got something to work with. Right. So speaking God's word mm. is power. And, and you get your yeah. angels to work for you also. That's right. And there's also an, uh, a good scripture in the book of Isaiah with regard to speaking the word. We have so often, you know, read books, we have read um, posters, we have read statuses about God is this, God is that, and positive thinking. But sometimes we forget what the Bible says. Mm. And the Bible has the ultimate answer. Mm. That's the truth. Yeah. You know, the Bible, what it says. And the good thing is, when we speak the word, the devil doesn't understand it. Mm. But he knows there is power in the word. So the more we speak the word, God is working on our behalf. Mm. So it's good to memorize scriptures on the power of God. I'll just read this in Isaiah 55, 
verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. So God is saying any word that goes out of my mouth, it's going to prosper. It's going to be accomplished. When God said, let there be light, mm. those few words itself had power to create light. You know, God didn't go around talking about the situation. Oh, it's so dark, you know. I wish we could get some light in this place, mm. you know. If somebody could just, you know, on some light here. No, He used His power. Mm. Let there be light. So you may be in a difficult situation and you say, Oh, it's difficult. I can't. I've tried. It's impossible. But the Lord is saying, speak my word. You know, mm. my word works only when it comes out of your mouth. Mm. And He says, I'm going to accomplish it. It, mm. And it's not going to return void, empty, mm. without producing results. That's right. And why do we say it's important to say the word? Because we see Proverbs tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm. And so really, the power that is coming out is really through your lips. Yeah. You're either letting the power of death work or the power of life. And when you let the power of life flow through, through you, you're actually speaking God's word. Mm. But when you let the power of death flow through you, you're speaking negative. You're speaking the words of the enemy. And both are going to yield different results. You're going mm. to see that. And you definitely won't like the results of the power of death. Yeah. You, know, you won't like that. You know, it's rather good to hold on. Because sometimes, I think it's easy for us, you know, it's, it's so much there in us, it's so much easier. It seems easier rather to worry and say, I can't, you know, it, it seems easier. Mm. But it's deadly. Mm. You know, it's bringing bad results. You're letting the power of death go through yeah. and bring and work results. And But when you see the power of life, when you speak God's word, sometimes mm. you have to set yourself to say it over yeah. and over again. You have to do that. That's what confession mm. is. Yeah. Saying the same thing over and over again. You know, you may have heard the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You may have heard that several times. But mm. the power is when you speak it. Mm. When you can't do something, you may give up but say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Maybe it's an addiction that you have to give up. Mm. Maybe it's something that's a habit that is bothering you. The more you say, I can do all things, I can overcome, not through my own strength, but through the power of mm. God that is in me. Even, even overcoming power is through the blood of Jesus. Mm. And I think our actions eventually follow. Yeah. The more you keep saying it. Because, you know, the more you keep saying, there's a force working in your body mm. that really does happen. It really works in your body and it causes also your actions also to change. Yeah. There is a force working. When you keep saying it, your actions begin to line up. Mm. You know, the more you keep saying it. And, and the more you keep saying it, mm. faith arises to believe actually what you're saying. Mm. In the start, it may seem difficult. Like, you know, I'm overcoming, I'm overcoming, but I don't feel like I'm overcoming. Mm. Or you may say, I'm an overcomer. The Bible says I'm an overcomer, but you may not feel. But the more you say it, Romans says, faith comes by hearing and hearing what the Word of God mm. says. So the more you hear yourself speaking the Word, faith will arise in from you and you will start believing what you're saying. That is the power that's arising in yeah. us because the Holy Spirit is in us. And like in the first verse we saw in Acts 1.8, yeah. where the Holy Spirit enables us to be a witness for Him. That mm. power flowing through you. That power will also flow through you to enable you to do things that are impossible, mm. or things that you can't do. And there are, I'm sure, weaknesses that you may have had and or maybe right now also you're facing. But, you know, you have, may overcome it with uh, changing habits or something. But the best way to start is first with the Word of God. As simple scripture as Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Now, He's strengthening you. So it's His power at work in you. Mm. And that's what we're talking about in this program. God's power is at work in you. Mm. When you realize... I am not on my own. There is somebody on the inside. Who is that somebody? It's the Holy Spirit. He has come to live in you. Yeah. And He wants His power to flow from you. It's going to be no good. I mean, in the natural, 
if, you know, so let's say the place was all dark. Mm. It's going to do no good if, you know, we just said, well, the light will come on, the light will come on. You I know, wish you, we yeah, could on the light. I wish we could on the light when the switch is just right there. You know, it's... Plugging your faith into Plugging your faith, yeah. And it's quite silly, you know, just to have the switch in front of you and mm. not on it. Well, mm. it's the same way in the same. spirit. You know, God's power is there on the inside of you. So the way you bring it out is with the word of God. Mm. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. And the reason we say that is because, see, words really determine the course of your life. Mm. They really do. The same thing happened with David when he mm. went to fight Goliath. He didn't say, I can do it, I can do it, or I can fight Goliath. He remembered something. Mm. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine mm. who has no covenant with God, but we, the armies of the living God, we are circumcised. We have a covenant with mm. God. You know, and David remembered that. And the more he spoke that, I'm sure he would have said it within himself. I can fight this giant with the help of the Lord. And that's mm. what enabled him. Who is this uncircumcised Philistines, Philistine coming against the armies of the living God? Mm. He remembered whom he was serving. Mm. Words see, yeah. are important. You got to look at your situation in front mm. of you and say, I can do all things through Christ. Mm. Maybe, you know, you've been saying, I got bad memory. You know, I can't remember things. I keep forgetting. You know, I, I don't remember things. You know, I can't, I don't have wisdom. Age. My mind is just going blank all the time. Age is catching up. We hear yeah, that often. Age is catching up or something. Or you may say, I wasn't born mm. to the right family or under the right star. Well, all those words are actually kind of, they're working. They're sharing the course of your life yeah. and causing you to constantly have bad memory. Mm. But when you realize when you're a believer in Jesus and you've asked the Holy Spirit to come into you, you have received power. And when you use God's word, that power flows from you. Then you'll start saying, I got the mind of Christ. Amen. First Corinthians tells us that we got the mind of Christ. In First hmm. Corinthians 2, maybe you want to just note that down. You know, if you've been saying I got a bad memory and all that. First Corinthians um, 1, or oh, it's 2 rather, First Corinthians 2 and verse 16 tells us that in the last part it says, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Mm. You can start saying that over your situation. I got the mind of Christ. And don't fear because through Christ you can do all things. My memory is blessed. The memory and of the just is blessed. That's also that's a right. promise. That's also a promise. Take the promises of the word and start speaking them. Maybe you might have to write them down or you, may, you, you can look at a confession book and speak the promises out. But the main thing is to get them out of your mouth. Mm. You can hide them in your heart, but then ultimately it has to come out of your mouth. Mm. That's when the power is activated. And we believe things will change in your life when you realize God's power is at work in you. Amen. Amen.